What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we take a look at Conan the Barbarian. This is uh, number 5, which is 280. Uh, includes the next chapter of all new Conan Navelia. So this one looks like he's on a boat sailing the seas. Looks pretty, pretty cool. So let's get into it. We never read the intro, so let's just skip that out. Conan had dozed for an hour, maybe two, and woke up cursing himself. Every time he slept, the ship drifted off course, pushing him another few leagues away from shore. Another day closer to death. I'd been there weeks since the idol drank blood and the others died screaming and the storm filled him farther across the southern sea. Or the storm flung him farther across the southern sea than anyone had ever known or heard tale of. Even the saltiest sailor would have died or, or gone stark raving mad by now, but Conan was too busy to give a damn. Busy sweating and cursing day and night. Busy surviving, he remembered the ways of the sailor he learned years before as a pirate along the black coast. Just as clear as though he remembered the fire in the eyes of Bellet and the freckles across her shoulder and the supple curve of her lower back, smooth as Agrossus's jib. Conan had worked as a crewman and first mate, and later captained a ship of his own among the Bar Barakian Isles, but never before had he done all of those jobs at once. Perhaps no man ever had or could, but this wasn't just a man, this was a Chimeran. More than that, this was Conan. Conan the... Crosser, captain of the ship of the dead. It had been three days since he, he'd eaten, since he was able to bring down a seabird with an arrow. Since then, no more birds, thanks no doubt to his boat's wearing stench, and still no sight of land. There was plenty of food rotting away in the ship's storehouse, but he dared not touch it, just as he wouldn't risk reeling in something from the sea. Not from the waters around the ship. Not after what he'd seen. Crumb's bloody damn teeth. That stinks. The stench from the below was becoming more unbearable every day. But as he learned the hard way, there was nothing he could do about that except endure it. All this death, he thought. All the bloody, briny ruin. All because of some... Damned wooden idol. As the gods were, as his witness, Conan swore this was the worst boat trip in the history of seafarings. It had been simply enough. He'd booked passage on a Verdarian merchant ship and bounded for Masai Tenea, where the arcade collector hooed, where Conan was eagerly awaiting his prize. It appeared to be both nothing more than a simple wooden idol. But given how furiously the apocalypse, the acolytes of Yamisha had fought to keep it, Conan knew it must have great value and dark power. He kept it wrapped in all times. He kept it wrapped at all times. Even then, his flesh burned when he touched it, and what little he glimpsed of its figure through the ancient cloth left him tossing and turning in his sleep each night, especially once the ship reached the black coast. The infamous haven of buccaneers, code of fears were quickly justified when one night the dreaded cry went up from this ship's watch. Pirates, ho! Pirates, ho! 
the Vengarians had sailed this route many times as usual. They paid a tribute to the pirate captains to buy safe passage. This time, however, their money only bought them bloodshed. Conan had hoped to travel easiest by ship, by travel fastest by ship, but it turned out that word of his cargo had travelled even faster. Someone knew what he carried, and he hired the bloodthirstiest of pirates to acquire it. <laughs> there it is. Kill this dog and take the idol. The wizard Trothamos was Conan's guest, that signia thorn who never seemed far from the Chimerian side. Still, Conan had killed pirates before and would be no easy plunder this time either. But it wasn't the Black Crusaders who would prove to be his greatest threat. Once the idol touched, once the blood touched the idol, a great storm came suddenly. Everything was black and heavy. and he, Everything was black and heaving. The, then the pirates began screaming and the merchant ship started sinking and Conan gripped his sword tight and leapt into the darkness. When the storm passed, Conan found himself on the deck of the pirate ship surrounded by dead men. Men who had not died by his sword, by any sword. What blasted delivery? Men torn to bloodshed, as if a pack of rabid beasts. But it was no earthly animal that had done the blood, bloodiest deeds. That had butchered every soul aboard. Every soul but one. It was no beast of the earth or sea. Crom! No thing ever beheld by the eyes of the sane or civilized. It was the idol itself. The came wailing and gnashing, brought to terrifying life from the darkness beyond knowing, endured on the blood of slaughtered pirates. It came, and Conan's sword sent it back to hell. When the creature died, it burst into flame, nearly taking the entire ship with it. Conan almost washed it. Wished it had. Instead, he was alone on the strange pirate ship, lost upon the sea, blown far from shore, and surrounded by nothing but the dead. I, it'd take days to get the ship all ready to sail, and then he'd have to somehow sail it himself, or for somewhere, anywhere but here. But first, something would have to be done before about the crew. Their wounds were black and hideously festering. Conan didn't pause for prayers as he heaved the first few overboard, though he quickly realized he was in need of some prayers himself. Consuming the corpses did things to the creatures of the sea, profoundly unnatural things. After that, the quarters below deck became a colonel house. There would be no more burials at sea, unless it was Conan who was being buried and the hell with dying. He had a ship to sail. Land, show me land, show me. Starving, exhausted, alone on a ship of ungodly precedence and grisly doom, with no land anywhere in sight, Conan made the mistake of telling himself that at least it could not get any worse. Ah, Crumb, you useless bastard! And with a crack of thunder, the gods voiced their disagreement. Conan cursed every god he could think of, most especially his own. It was the longest night of his life. But the Chimerian vowed that what the hell is this now? It would be the last. The storm passed, the misery did not. The rat must have gotten the bodies, been changed by its feeding. The same was, same way as the sharks. One bite from the thing like that, and Conan knew it would change as well. If he hadn't already, how much longer could he, he hold out? He wondered how hungry would he have to be 
before he would think about doing what the rat had done. Conan assured himself he would never know before that day came. He'd rather eat his own sword. That resolve would be tested, its sails ruined by the storm. The ship drifted aimlessly. So did Conan. The lack, for the lack of another companion, he took to talking to his sword. He told it tales of adventures, the lost treasures and thinkable monsters, and fair wonders the cold call of home. Conan told the sword his darkest secrets, his deepest unspoken truths, its dreams and desires. He told it he was afraid, and there were times late at night when the sea was still and the cracking ship went silent as death. That Conan was alone, the cold wet darkness, shivering and starving, was certain beyond a doubt. Never before had Conan felt such joy at the sight of strange sails. All men to arms! Ha! Time to get back to work, boys! Is that a mirage? Can't be. Pirates! If I surrendered to them, they would plunder his ship and unleash unimaginable horrors if he fought them alone and starved he would surely die, no matter the flag that flapped above them. It was an easy choice to make. To hell with the gods, all I need is you. He raised his own flag, and that gave the, sh the, and that gave the other ship pause. Conan didn't wait for them to change their minds about attacking. The roar and a mighty leap, he was a pirate again, the fiercest pirate on the southern sea. Arm yourselves, you bastards. Are you being boarded? He only had to slay a third of the crew before the others voted anonymously to elect him their new captain. After that, there was only one question. And the answer was fire. As he sailed away in his new ship, leaving the burned husk of his old behind, along with whatever was left of it on the damned idol. Conan began to tell the story of his voyage to his newfound crew. It looked to be nothing more than a simple wooden idol, but given how the acolytes of Yusmir had fought to keep it, I figured it must have great value and dark power, and by crumb it did. He talked the whole night through. The crew marvelled at how one man could survive such a hellish ordeal. They could sacredly believe his tale. So he told it again and again, the next night, and the whole time he feasted and drank and laughed. He sang sea songs no Chimera and Tongue had ever uttered. He led toasts to all the gods. Here's to the Finnish bastards who made those sharks. But most, he enjoyed the noise, happy to no longer be alone. The Chimera had been all over the world and found most of the people in any local to be the same manner of fools, but despite his own drooping disposition and violent dismissal of immiscible might lead you to believe there was something that drew the Chimera into the company of others. Conan knew he was not meant to be alone. The doom, the doom, the blood-red doom, from his garden of Phyllis grows, the crimson doom, not even at his death. There is power, power, power in the blood, from the tower, tower, tower comes the flood. In his name the world shall bleed, rise little will, rise from the blood, seed. So other than that, that is the end of this Conan comic, I hope you all enjoyed it, Al. It was quite good. I did enjoy this one. It was a very good sort of ocean trip. So other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. See you all next one. Have a nice day and goodbye. Stay home and stay safe.